So let's start with agenda. I recently learned that uh, every good presentation should have an agenda. So the agenda for today is that uh, we'll start with a very, very brief introduction on how diffusion model works. Then we'll move into stuff that uh, we can generate. And um, then we'll try to, I, I will talk about what are the still some drawbacks of uh, diffusion models and what we can work on. Actually, this is the first drawback. I tried to generate uh, very bad looking images from DALI 3 and actually the API doesn't allow me to do it. Those are the worst that I could, could have. So we have one drawback already. Okay, but let's start with, with some good stuff. So what we already can generate and um, let's say how. So um, of course, if you think about diffusion models, probably the first thing that came to your mind is images. And uh, instead of showing you more images, I just wanted to, to, point, uh, to point out that uh, maybe we don't think about it too much, but uh, 10 years ago, the state of the art was VAE or GANs, where we were able to generate minis digits uh, or, or something like this. And in 10 years, we moved up to uh, DALI 3, which uh, generates super high resolution, super cool images. Um, so I'm just curious what will happen in the next five years. Five years ago, it was a uh, time where we had style gun or uh, by gun. This is when I started my PhD, and this was all only uh, possible to do with uh, super uh, resources that we never had, uh, and now it changed completely. So it's going in a good direction, let's say. So of course we can generate images with the recent diffusion models, and uh, as I promised, let's start with a brief introduction to to be on the same side. Uh, so, how the diffusion model? The, the general idea is that instead of using a single pass through the neural network, how we do in fresh autoencoders or generative adversarial networks, in diffusion model models we uh, we train the model to do to to generate new images in a series of small steps. We have the forward diffusion process where we take original images and we noise them a little bit with uh, many many small steps. If you think about it, if we add a little bit of Gaussian noise to an image, and we add more and more and more and more, we'll end up in the situation where at the end we have almost uh, we have uh, uh, only the noise because it completely overshadowed all of the signal that was there previously. Uh, so this is the forward pass. And what we train is the backward pass that we call backward generative pass where we train a single model to reverse one step of the diffusion process. So to reverse only one step to remove one step of adding noise to, uh, to the image. Now we can generate new instances by taking random Gaussian noise and we can apply this trained uh, diffusion model, this trained denoiser, let's say 1,000 times in order to get to the uh, target image. So this is the very basic setup. Uh, usually uh, what we use in here is some unit architecture in between. Uh, and this is uh, once more, I repeat it once more, this is always one model that is trained to do this, this whole stuff. Uh, so uh, this is the basic setup, but um, usually if you think about it, uh, if you think about diffusion models, we, are, mm, we have in mind that um, they are often conditioned on some text, and there is nothing extraordinary in here. Um, it's just the same rule that, we, that is used in the standard diffusion model. So we have a single denoiser that we apply a lot of time, but the, the only difference is, it in, is that uh, in DALI, for example, DALI 2, DALI 3, uh, the, the model is additionally conditioned on some text embeddings that are extracted from the frozen uh, clip text encoder that is trained like, totally separately. So we don't have, uh, so, so we train this clip uh, separately. We take some text encodings. We, there is one more small detail that, uh, that uh, authors uh, of DALI propose not to use the, exactly the clip embeddings, but to learn some prior. But basically these embeddings are then uh, passed to the every net block uh, of the diffusion process, uh, the diffusion model that, uh, of, of this denoiser that is applied so many times. So this is the basic text to image uh, idea in DALI, but uh, there are already a lot of works that build on top of this idea. I just wanted to highlight one of those, uh, which I think is very interesting, where um, authors use what, something what is called self-guidance uh, to uh, change the images uh, that are already generated. So the, the idea in here is to use the images that were generated and to uh, try to change some things on this image according to uh, the guidance from the, uh, according to the uh, attention maps that, that, uh, that is spanned by the clip embedding. So for example, in here, if you want to switch the macaron and croissant, uh, we use the clip embeddings to see, to, to check where according to the attention map is the croissant and where is the macro, and uh, we can do it only with the text embeddings. Okay, so 
uh, I told that uh, this is done with something that is called self-guidance, and uh, this idea is based on one more idea that is called the classifier guidance, uh, which is a very promising, let's say, uh, uh, area of research where we can actually try to somehow combine diffusion models with classifiers. Um, and here the idea is that let's assume that we have a diff trained diffusion model that is trained in an unconditional way, let's say, on all of the image net, but without any labels. So we only can generate random image from random class. But at the same time, let's say that we have classifier. It doesn't matter what type of classifier. There is already also trained on um, image net, or I don't know, something, some other data set um, that is trained, for example, to distinguish between birds and cats. Uh, so what we can do with this uh, classifier guidance is that we can try to use the gradient of the classifier add it uh, in every step of the backward diffusion process in order to sample from the particular class and not uh, from the random class. So this allows us to, uh, for example, generate birds even though we don't have a uh, conditioned uh, diffusion model. So we can use the gradient classifier of the classifier, we can add it in the, you know, the, the steps in order to go towards a particular class. And this idea uh, seems very simple but it can be extended further. For example, there is, uh, uh, first of all, it gives us this uh, um, possibility to generate from different classes, and you can see on the right, on the left. Um, uh, but it can be exploited even further. There is a new paper that is called Universal Guidance, uh, where Arthos proposed to extend this idea not only to classifiers, but also to other models, like for example, segmentation models or detection models, where you can select where you want to have something or, um, what, ta what, what, is, what should be the target segmentation mask according to the external model for, that, we can, that we can use to guide towards uh, with this uh, classifier guidance. Okay, so this was the idea of the guidance. Uh, and one more nice thing that uh, you can actually use them, the, this guidance for is that you can try to, for example, explain the decisions of the classifier with, uh, try, with generating something that is changing the decision of the classifier, but doesn't change the image too much. So for example, on the right, you can see examples for, from the malaria data set. On, at the beginning, on the top, you can see blood cells that have malaria parasites. Those are those small violet dots. And uh, you can see that at the beginning, model has a very high uh, probability of this being a malicious cell. Uh, but then uh, what we do, we noise these uh, examples a bit, and we try to reconstruct them while uh, at the same time changing the decision of the classifier. So you can see how we cure the cells out of malaria. Um, we remove those small violet dots, which means that classifier made the decision based on those violet dots actually, which is super cool. Uh, on the left, you can see some other examples for, for more classes than just two. Okay, uh, so I told that uh, uh, I told about um, images already, but diffusion models are also used for for other modalities. Maybe let's hear a little bit of samples. Don't go wasting your emotion. Lay all your love on me. Yesterday was karaoke, yeah, so I didn't sing today. It was uh, fully generated. Uh, I, I wanted to just show you a small example from the work that was called Deep Singer. And uh, below that, uh, there are some examples of uh, what we can do in text to speech models. If you can just play one sample by another. A Beach Boys Party. 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 Okay, actually now we have a kind of game because uh, normally if uh, we had PowerPoint it would work, but uh, the, there, was, there were just uh, different balls from Poland balls. Uh, now we can see it, but uh, can you guess what was the second one? Maybe you can play it once more. A beach boys party. British, yeah, it's a British accent. Uh, a beach boys party. This one? Indian, okay. <laughs> A beach boys party. Yeah, this was Irish. Oh, this a beach hard. boys party. Okay, this was Welsh. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, this was a simple example of how we can uh, condition diffusion models. Uh, in this case, we condition it only on the accent and we were able to generate uh, examples with exactly the same speaker, but with different accents. 
Um, so um, the idea in here is very similar to, to this text, to, uh, to this uh, generating uh, images, because basically uh, uh, generations, uh, basically speech is kind of an image, at least for me, sorry. <laughs> uh, because what we worked on was uh, text, uh, was uh, spectrograms. I don't want to go into details on how speech synthesis works, but I wanted to point out a very, one very interesting work that we also based our approach on, which is called GRAD-TTS. And here there is a very interesting part that might be applicable for out of, uh, also for other domains. Uh, the authors in here propose to use uh, some very simple model, uh, as you can see here, it's very, very simple, uh, to generate uh, the average uh, spectrogram for a given uh, words, like for example, here you have hello, hello word. So the spectrogram, average spectrogram, would look something like this. This is, this sounds very bad if you try to uh, change it back to wave. Uh, but what authors proposed is to use this as a starting point from the for the diffusion process. So you can uh, generate those average examples and try to learn the diffusion process to go from average examples that are actually noise to the normal distribution with those uh, this average as a mean, and go from this to the original example. This is very uh, interesting work because it's allowed them to reduce the number of diffusion steps to just 50 and the, the, the uh, results were already very, of the very, very good quality. Uh, okay, um, as a last uh, example for uh, yet another domain, uh, that there are some works on 3D, uh, in 3D domain I, uh, that I wanted to point out. I don't want to go into details of those, but uh, there is a very interesting, okay, there are much more works that, that are interesting, but I selected just two that uh, were in the first one, uh, diffusion models are applied to edit nerve uh, scenes. There are, those are actually 3D scenes, not the videos. Uh, and in the second one, then a very interesting uh, approach is to, to generate rotate images by simply generating uh, image uh, of the next rotation while conditioning on the uh, current uh, uh, approach with uh, and the uh, and the different the difference between uh, in this uh, pose. Okay, so this was what we can generate, and now let's move to f several ideas of what we can still improve. And there is one interesting um, uh, problem of diffusion models that we can uh, tackle. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's it's not very common to to talk about it, but actually, if you think about data, uh, there are some example. If you think about one example, some, something similar to the talk that we had uh, just, just before, we had um, some of the examples that come from the high density regions, like those in here, for example. If you consider only uh, lanterns for Halloween, and examples from low density regions. So also true valid examples, but they are from uh, from the region that that is very diverse and it's not compact. Uh, and if you train a diffusion model on this kind of data set, it will uh, over, let, let's say, uh, it will focus mostly on these high density regions. And if you try to sample from this uh, model, you will mostly sample from the high density region, while examples from the low density region will be extremely hard to, to get. Uh, I'll just show that uh, in, in order to generate some examples from, from the low density regions, they had to sample eight times more examples in, in general to, to get anything from there. Um, and uh, th in this work, in this particular work, if you are interested in how to m try to mitigate it, uh, they propose to use the classifier guidance that I showed to earlier to, to sample from these low density regions. But this is just the solution, not the, the answer to the problem. So uh, one of the possible solutions. So uh, I think this is still an interesting uh, thing to, to, to discover further. Um, there is a big problem of diffusion models uh, when it comes to discrete data. Um, so the, if you think about it, the forward process of the diffusion, uh, where we add some random Gaussian noise, uh, does not naturally support discrete data because there is nothing like, uh, let's say, in the dis dis discretized data, there is no state in between of two possible discrete values. Uh, so this is why, for example, you don't see a lot of works on diffusion models in text. Of course, there are some, I, I will mention this, but uh, it's not like uh, you have super uh, performance of diffusion models in images, uh, speech, and videos, and there is almost nothing in terms of text. Uh, there are some approaches that try to deal with this. I just mentioned them, them here. Uh, for example, based on this uh, second approach, there is already also uh, diffusion BERT, but uh, what authors showed was very limited 
uh, evaluation there and um, they, they uh, highlighted some limitations, like for example, the fact that they have to fit all of the synthesized uh, approach to uh, synthesize data into uh, the model, so it's uh, quite problematic. Another interesting uh, uh, approach is what is called variation flow networks, which is uh, a new work by um, uh, Grace et al. Um, that, uh, that is very similar to diffusion models, but encodes several interesting uh, properties and directly solves this problem of uh, modeling uh, and discrete distributions. Uh, here, um, the, the, I, I don't want to go into much into this because it's very long and uh, 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 very long work, but um, what Auto is proposing here is to model the parameters of the data distribution instead of direct values of examples. So instead of saying that, for example, we want to run the diffusion model on pixels, we that, that have values, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 17. Um, what they propose is to run process that is very similar to the diffusion, diffusion process, uh, but on the parameters of the distribution, like for example, the parameters of the Gaussian, so mean and variance or something like this, and try to fit this, those parameters to the data parameters. Um, they also use Bayesian inference for updates on inter independent distributions, but uh, there is a very clever trick to somehow combine those independent distributions, like for example, independent pixels through, uh, together by passing them all together through one neural network that learn on the, or the independencies, uh, interdependencies. If you're interested in this work, we have an expert on, uh, on this, uh, one of the PhD students that I uh, work with, and uh, you can find him later on. Um, finally, uh, not finally yet, uh, one more thing is that we still struggle a lot uh, with diffusion models if we would want to generate anything fast. Um, and the state-of-the-art methods can use up to 4,000 diffusion steps. So if you think about it, if you want to generate one thing, you have to pass the random noise 4,000 times through the uh, denoiser, and this is still problematic. For example, if I, I wanted to synthesize this toucan on a simple GPU, it took me 10 minutes, so it's quite problematic. And there are some works that try to, uh, to solve this problem, so it's not like it's... Uh, no, no one done, did, did nothing here, but uh, so for example, there is work that is called the, the EM, uh, which uh, proposed different uh, sampling procedure and uh, works on distillation that uh, used the sampling procedure to uh, distill uh, big networks with a lot of steps into uh, big networks with, more, with less steps, and this worked uh, pretty well. The, the second work is actually based on the first one. Um, okay, I don't have much time, so I want to mention the last fin uh, final uh, interesting opportunity of what, you, what, what, what we can still do with diffusion models, and the problem is how to actually fine-tune those models. Uh, so if you think about uh, big diffusion models like the DALI, for example, and uh, the fact that the world is still changing, uh, and for, for example, you want to uh, generate celebrities or something like this, it might happen that we have, an, I don't know, new... A super cool football player that we want to be able to generate. And normally, uh, if you take 1,000 photographs of this guy and you want to retrain the model with, with those additional 1,000 photographs, it's very problematic. So we have to somehow learn how to fine tune those big models. Uh, what people do right now, uh, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure because uh, I think they, they, they don't reveal their secrets, but for what I learned is they use some basic continual learning uh, methods like adding some additional um, parts of the model or retraining with some random samples from the previous uh, data set not to suffer from catastrophic forgetting. Uh, but there are two works that I wanted to mention. One is, is actually using this thing to, the, this problem of forgetting to uh, allow you to use your own photographs uh, in some interesting uh, setups. And the second one is uh, to use the same thing, <laughs> fine tuning, to actually forget some examples that we don't want to, uh, our model to, to, to know, like for example, celebrities. Okay, so just to conclude, uh, the progress of generative models is very uh, extraordinary, but there is still something that uh, we can do. And uh, I'm always happy to, to share with you more details about uh, my works that were somewhere, somewhere there and, and, or, or some other papers that I think you find interesting. Okay, thank you very much.